Hi everyone! Today, let's talk about the reproductive cyclicity, terminology, and basic concepts. For the table of contents, first, we have terminology describing cyclicity. Second is the two major phases of estrous cycle. And lastly, we have the division of estrous cycle. For the first part, the terminology describing cyclicity. And in this section, we will only focus on the terms associated with estrous cycle. What is estrous cycle? After puberty, the female enters a period of reproductive cyclicity that continues throughout most of her life. Estrous cycles consist of a series of predictable reproductive events beginning at estrous, or commonly termed as heat, and ending at the subsequent estrous. They continue throughout the adult female's life and are interrupted by pregnancy, nursing, and by season of the year in some species. Estrous cycles provide females with repeated opportunities to copulate and become pregnant. Sexual receptivity and copulation are the primary behavioral events that occur during estrus. Copulation generally occurs prior to ovulation. If conception or pregnancy does not occur, another estrous cycle begins, providing the female with another opportunity to mate and conceive. Next is the term anestrus. It is a period when reproductive cyclicity stops. Usually occurs when the animal is already pregnant or during the gestation period. Another possible cause are pathologic conditions of the reproductive tract, such as uterine infection, persistent corporal lutea, or a mummified fetus. Cyclicity may also cease if nutrition is inadequate or environmental conditions are unusually stressful. Other terms associated with reproductive cyclicity, we have the parturition or the act of giving birth of a parent to an offspring. Next is uterine involution. It is the acquisition of normal uterine size and function, which usually occurs after parturition when the pregnant uterus returns to its pre-pregnancy state. We also have the term menstruation which is defined as the sloughing of the endometrium to the exterior. Now let's proceed to confusing terms related to reproductive cyclicity. The terms estrous versus estrous, or the, the word estrous that ends in US and the one that ends with OUS. The word estrous that ends in US is a noun while the estrous that ends in OUS is an adjective. Example, the cow is displaying estrous. The length of the estrous cycle in the pig is 21 days. Another terms, we have the oestrous and the oestrous. These are the preferred spellings in British and European literature. Another term is the word estrual. It is an adjective used to identify a condition related to estrus. For example, an estrual female is a female in estrus. Heat, a common term used to describe estrus. We also have the term season, a common term used to describe a reproductive pattern, which usually refers to several estrus cycles that may occur during a certain season of the year. This table summarizes the common terms applied to farm animals and other information. Now we have the three types of estrocyclicity. First, we have the polyestrous, second, seasonally polyestrous, and lastly, we have the monoestrous. Polyestrous females, such as cattle, swine, and rodents, are characterized as having a uniform distribution of estrocycles throughout the entire year. Polyestrous females can become pregnant throughout the year without regard to season. Second, we have the seasonally polyestrous females, such as sheep, goats, mares, deer, and elk. They display clusters of estrocycles 
that occur only during a certain season of the year. This type of estrous cycle can be categorized into two. First is the short day breeders and second is the long day breeders. For the short day breeders such as sheep and goats, they begin to cycle as the day length increases in autumn. And for the long day breeders such as mare or the female horse, initiates cyclicity as the day length increases during spring season. And lastly, we have the monoesterous females, such as dogs, wolves, foxes, and bears, which are characterized as having a single estrous cycle per year. Domestic canids typically have three estrous cycles every two years, but they are generally classified as monoesterous. This table summarizes the characteristics of estrous cycles in domestic animals. such as the classification of the estrous cycle, the length, the duration, the time from onset to estrous to ovulation, and the time from the surge of LH to ovulation. Type of estrous cycles as described by annual estradiol profiles. For polyestrous animals such as cow, queen, pig, and rodents, their estradiol levels peaks throughout the year. For seasonal polyesterous such as in long day breeders or mare, their estradiol levels usually peaks during spring breeding season. And for short day breeders, the eel, doe, elk, and nanny, their estradiol levels usually peaks during autumn breeding season. For monoestrous animals such as dog, wolf, fox, and bears, their estradiol level only peaks once a year. For the second part, we have the two major phases of estrous cycle. The two major phases of estrous cycle are the follicular phase and the luteal phase. For the follicular phase, it is the period from regression of corporal lutea to ovulation. In general, the follicular phase is relatively short, encompassing about 20% of the estrous cycle. During the follicular phase, the primary ovarian structures are large growing follicles that secrete the primary reproductive hormone, which is the estradiol. And during this phase, large antral follicles are the primary ovarian structure, and estradiol secreted by follicles are the primary hormone. Next, we have the luteal phase. This period occurs from ovulation until the regression of corporal lutea. The luteal phase is much longer than the follicular phase and in most mammals occupies about 80% of the estrous cycle. During this phase, the dominant ovarian structures are the corporal lutea and the primary reproductive hormone is progesterone. Even though the, the luteal phase is dominated by progesterone from the CL, or corporal lutea, follicles continue to grow and regress during this phase, but they do not produce high concentrations of estradiol. This figure illustrates the phases of the estrous cycle. The follicular phase begins after luteolysis that causes the decline in progesterone. Gonadotropins, such as Follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone are therefore secreted that causes follicles to secrete estradiol, as indicated by E2. The follicular phase is dominated by estradiol secreted by ovarian follicles. And the follicular phase ends at ovulation. Next, the luteal phase begins after ovulation and includes the development of corporal lutea that secrete progesterone as indicated by P4. The luteal phase also includes luteolysis that is accompanied by a rapid drop in progesterone. Luteolysis is brought about by prostaglandin F2 alpha. For the last part, we have the divisions of estrocycle. 
In this section, we will talk about the four stages of estrous cycle. The two major phases of estrous cycle can be subdivided into four stages. First, the follicular phase can be subdivided into proestrous and estrous, while the luteal phase can be subdivided into metestrous and diestrous. First, proestrous is characterized by the formation of ovulatory follicles along with the secretion of estradiol. For the estrous stage, it is characterized by sexual receptivity and the peak of estradiol secretion. Third, we have the metestrus. It is characterized by the formation of corpora lotea and the beginning of progesterone secretion. And lastly, we have the diestrus, which is characterized by the sustained luteal secretion of progesterone. Now, what is proestrus? Proestrus begins when progesterone declines as a result of luteolysis or the destruction of the corpus luteum and terminates at the onset of estrus. It usually lasts from 2 to 5 days depending on species and is characterized by a major endocrine transition from a period of progesterone dominance to a period of estradiol dominance. The pituitary gonadotropins, FSH, or follicle stimulating hormone and LH, the luteinizing hormone, are the primary hormones responsible for this transition. It is during proestrus that antral follicles mature for ovulation and the female reproductive system prepares for the onset of estrus and mating. Next, we have the term estrus or the second stage of estrus cycle. It is the period during which the female allows copulation. The most recognizable stage of the estrus cycle because it is characterized by visible behavioral symptoms such as sexual receptivity and mating. Estradiol is the dominant hormone during this stage of estrous cycle. Estradiol not only induces profound behavioral alterations but causes major physiologic changes in the reproductive tract. Behavioral changes include increased locomotion, phonation or the vocal expression, nervousness, and attempts to mount other animals. The term standing estrus is the female's willingness to accept the male for mating. It is also referred to as HIP, a brief period within a female's reproductive cycle during which she will allow herself to be mounted. Next, the term lordosis. It is the characteristic mating posture displayed by the female during estrus. It is named because of a characteristic arching of the back in preparation for mating. Standing behavior is easily observed and is used as a diagnostic tool to identify the appropriate time to inseminate the female artificially or to expose her to the breeding male. For the third stage of estrus cycle, we have metestrus. It is the transition from estradiol dominance to progesterone dominance as progesterone is responsible for the maintenance of pregnancy or gestation. It is the period between ovulation and the formation of functional corpora lutea. During early metestrus, both estradiol and progesterone are relatively low. Newly ovulated follicle undergoes cellular and structural remodeling called as luteinization, resulting in the formation of an intraovarian endocrine gland called the corpus luteum. Progesterone secretion begins in metestrus and is detectable soon after ovulation. However, 2 to 5 days are usually required after ovulation before the newly formed corpora lutea produce significant quantities of progesterone. For the last stage of estrus cycle, we have the diestrus. It is the period of maximum luteal function. The longest stage of estrus cycle and is the period of time when the corpus luteum is fully functional and Progesterone secretion is high. It ends when the corpus luteum is destroyed by means of luteolysis. 
High progesterone allows the uterus to prepare a suitable environment for early embryo development and eventual attachment of the conceptus to the endometrium. Diestrus usually lasts about 10 to 14 days in most large mammals. The duration of diestrus is directly related to the length of time that the corpus luteum remains functional or secretes progesterone. Females in diestrus do not display estrus behavior. This figure illustrates the stages of the estrus cycle. Proestrus is characterized by a significant rise in estradiol secreted by maturing follicles. Next, when estradiol reach a certain level, the female shows behavioral estrus and then ovulates. Following ovulation, cells of the follicle are transformed into luteal cells that form the corpus luteum during metastrus. And lastly, diestrus is characterized by a fully functional corpus luteum and high progesterone. That's all for today. Thank you.